Welcome to episode 130 of Sport SA Daily Diary. Today we're turning to South Africa's leading female badminton player, Juanita Skoltz. Juanita, how are you? Good afternoon. I'm fine. <laughs> fine, thank you. And yourself? Yeah, very good. Uh, thank you for joining us today on Sport SA Daily Diary. It's lovely to chat to you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity, and I'm glad to do this. <laughs> No problem at all. Um, before we start, interesting fact, you're actually the third pupil of Eunice High School that we're chatting to in the last couple of weeks. Um, we chatted to a young tennis player who's currently still at school, uh, as well as a uh, modern pentathlete who's, who's still at the school. It uh, seems to be quite this, the school of producing uh, top female talented athletes. Well, it is a great school, so I don't expect anything less. <laughs> Uh, Janita, you um, are born in Namibia, am I correct? Uh, born South African, but my parents stay in Namibia, so I have both um, dual ships. I don't know how to call it, or what do you call it? Um, and uh, <laughs> as mentioned, you, you went to Eunice High School. Uh, tell us a bit about the, the Janita growing up. Um, were you quite active on the sports field? Well, yes, I did a few sports like swimming, badminton, um, hockey, athletics. It's a, where I grew up is a very small town, so everyone there did everything. So you never had a time off. <laughs> the more, the better. And um, do you feel that uh, having participated in a number of different sports that's helped you to get to where you are with uh, your badminton? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, I have a few different skills that I could do in, like um, strength-wise, uh, flexibility-wise. So all the different sports definitely did, did help me. So. And uh, badminton's obviously not your your mainstream sport. Uh, what what made you choose to start participating in badminton? Uh, badminton, well, I got a scholarship for badminton and swimming, so I had to do like a choice between the two. But badminton pulled me closer because that has like different um, techniques and different exercises and challenges. So um, that was my main, or how can I explain it, the, the sport that pulled me in. What is it about uh, the sport that uh, you really enjoy, other than obviously the, the different styles and techniques? Um, probably all the challenges, the different people you get to meet, um, cultures you get um, interviewing into, or um, yeah, the interactions between people. I think and, that's uh, really nice. Nita, when did you kind of realize that uh, you actually had the knack of this game and you were pretty good and it's something that you could uh, look at pursuing? Um, around the age of 10, because uh, that's the age I started performing and uh, got opportunities to like go play tournaments in Mauritius and stuff like that. So with that being said, um, I thought that like I could do it maybe if I wanted to. So <laughs> I kept on going. <laughs> and uh, do you remember the first time that you re uh, represented South Africa? Oh, yes, definitely. Yes, yes. It was a time like around 14 going to Malaysia, one of the best countries. So I would never forget a time like that. Tell us a bit about that, both from a, a sort of emotional perspective of at such a young age going overseas to represent your country um, and from a sort of participation perspective. Was it a, a sort of level up from what you'd been used to playing? Well, emotionally wise, it was challenging because all the players in the team were quite way older than me. But um, I had that realization of saying that this is an opportunity to learn and to grow. It's not just of playing. It's like I could see other players playing and to learn more from them. So, and like performing wise, I had a few games I could play in, but obviously being so small and not very um, skilled, it was challenging to perform, but um, definitely I learned a lot. So, 
Yeah. Uh, did the, all the players take you under their wing and, and look after you, or was it all very much uh, each person to their own? No, no, no. They took me in. Each player like gave their own opinion of how to handle things. Gave me a lot of tips. Um, they like guided me through the process. So I'm very grateful for that. <laughs> and uh, Nita, you've really risen in the in the ranks in uh, South Africa and Africa and uh, and and the rest of the world. Um, in 2016, you came second in uh, the tournament in Botswana. Um, losing in the final to a, a lady from Uganda. Um, was that your first big um, sort of result in terms of uh, getting to a final of a tournament? 2016, uh, I think that one I won against the Botswana girl. Okay. Yes, it was the SA International I lost, but the Botswana one I won. <laughs> but um, I think I was shocked. First of all, it's the first international I really played in and to be able to perform like that and play against African players I've never seen before, it's quite a big shock. But at least it gave me an eye opener to see that there is more to accomplish and I can do it, so. And uh, you were always surrounded by a couple of uh, good other South African players like Megan um, De Beer and Sandra Lagrange. Um, have you guys got quite a, a, a tight-knit group in terms of uh, a friendship or is it very competitive amongst uh, the female players in South Africa? Uh, well, there is always like a competition side to any type of person or any sport, but we all had a close relationship and we all knew that we had to have a relationship to be able to grow together and to push each other. So, um, but otherwise, yes, we had this competitive side, but we all knew that you have friendships and you have your, um, like I said, the competitive side. So you knew where your boundaries were. And Nita, so. you've, uh, you've played the singles and you obviously play women's doubles and mixed doubles as well. Do you have a preference in terms of uh, which of those three you prefer playing? Uh, well, uh, my main focus is on singles, but then I do have, uh, like an interest in doubles mixed I, I like playing it but it's not one of my favorites but um double wise i have a partner that like wants to go further in doubles so i try to like grow in that event as well but mostly it's just my singles and uh 2018 uh the sa international tournament and 2019 the botswana international tournament you uh you won both tournaments uh, the doubles uh, playing with Megan and Leandra, but both times you beat uh, Michelle Butler Emmett. She must uh, hate the sight of you in a in a doubles match. <laughs> well, she's a great player, but I think it's just the stronger player coming out of that side. But there's many times she's beaten me as well, so I think we both are. I call it a friend of me <laughs> on court, but yes, I don't know. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, Nisha, you also had some, some brilliant results. Uh, 2016 at the African Champs, you got silver in the mixed team, uh, bronze in the women's doubles. 2019 was a, a great year at the African Games for you. You got gold in the, in the singles, bronze in the, in the mixed, and bronze in the women's doubles. I mean, those are pretty special accolades at such a young age. Well, yeah, I'm quite shocked as well for all the achievements that I, I got, but um, I had this main focus to see, try to be the youngest player to achieve things, and mostly in my career I got that, but um, to be able to perform on this age already is like really, um, how, how can I explain it? In Afrikaans, you would say it's a uh, geleentheid. I can't get the English word for it now, but... Very proud, um, I would imagine. That's the right word, proud, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's a good accomplishment. And uh, you haven't just performed uh, on the international or the, the African uh, continent. You've also been overseas. You went to the Gold Coast in 2018 to the Commonwealth Games. Uh, how was that? Again, another massive tournament for somebody so young. That experience was hectic, like a person learns a lot, not just on court, but off court, you get to know the crowd, you get to know the people. Um, 
on that age, it's quite challenging as well, because like you're so much younger than everyone. But honestly to say, I think that was one of my best tournaments I've ever played at. But not only like performing wise, but just being able to attend that big event. And I mean, it must be, again, very proud moment representing your country on that sort of international stage. Yes, no, very, very proud. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and Nita, it's a, it's, a, it's a challenging game for those that sort of don't play it or play it just for fun. Um, what would you say is your strengths in terms of, of the game itself? I think um, like endurance wise, I'm very fit and strength. I have a lot of power due to swimming because you build a lot of muscle in your upper body. So that gave me quite an advantage, but mostly it's my endurance of going on and on and on. So when I'm tired, that's the best time I perform because I go, yeah. And in terms of your training schedule, uh, are you sort of on the court every single day? Yes, every single day, six times a week, so six days a week, um, training two to three hours, taking a break in another two to three hours. So it's quite of a lot of hours on court and off court as well, because you have to prepare yourself mentally and um, like you, have to, you also have exercises to do at home. And then it's apart from all the gym, so it's quite a lot of hours. So, um, as mentioned earlier, you at the University of Free State, you're studying at the same time. Uh, you're obviously still young, and and you have a need for a social life and and friends and going out with them, and then to all these hours of training. How do you balance all of this in in one go? Well. Um, I first take like all my study schedules and then I'll start planning with my coach which times I can train and which times I can't. Um, but like I'm trying to focus just on my sport first. So friends, they have to wait um, for days that I'm open. <laughs> but um, yes, yeah, so it's mostly just planning around everything and trying to schedule everything in a time which I'm available. And you're obviously in a, a serious relationship. Does is he very understanding of your schedule as as well as your friends? Are they sort of understanding? Sorry, Nita can't come out tonight. She's training tomorrow morning for thirty. Well, years. everyone understands. Well, everyone understands like um, where my head's at and what I'm trying to accomplish. So they don't try to stand in my way. In my relationship, it's he's also a very active. Um, sportsman so he understands how many hours you have to put in and that the commitment that goes into it so yeah they are just like supporting and not interfering. <laughs> um, Nita has there been a specific player that's been your most challenging player to date uh, that you've come up against? Um, a few years back, yes, there was Almey and Sandra. Um, they was very strong players, but with time they like got different careers. They stopped badminton, but then this new up and coming player Megan De Beer came into badminton, which was a um, great competition because she's young and everyone wants her to perform just as well. So there was a lot of pressure, but yeah, Megan was definitely one of my top. Um, competitors. <laughs> and internationally, where do you find the, the best players originate from? Or is it very much uh, sort of around the world, just dependent on the athlete? Yeah, it's uh, mostly around the world. But like, um, I know Spain has one Carolina Marin. Um, there's Thai team from a different country. So it all depends on what events are playing. So in single wise, there's a lot of great players from Denmark, from Sweden. So um, I think it just depends which player is the better player of the day. And Nita, you, you mentioned you're uh, relative or very ambitious and, and people need to understand uh, about your ambitions. What are your ambitions for the future in terms of, of the sport itself? Well, um, I have this goal where I want to attend the Olympics, where I wanted to attend the 2020, but unfortunately, things fell forward so I couldn't attend it, but like I'm trying to like qualify maybe for 2024, if the Olympics is gonna be that year. But 
then otherwise short term goal i want to try for the next commonwealth games that's being held in england so that's my short time goals and uh, <laughs> do you see yourself i mean you're only 20 now uh, do you see yourself playing the game for a good 10 years to come or is it, does it have a shelf life um, for an athlete <laughs> no well um from small i said i'll probably play around 28th maybe maybe a little later but i won't stop before that i think there's too many things i still want to accomplish and there's not a lot of time so i'm trying to push <laughs> my career <laughs> like a very busy and, and active young lady um <laughs> nita it's, it's been great chatting to you has there been one moment in your career that's been a standout for you so far uh, that you kind of look back and think, wow, I, I'm pretty proud of myself. I can't believe I achieved that. I never thought it would even be a realistic goal. Um, well, yes, last year, 2019, I attended the All African Games in Morocco, where I went out just to maybe reach semifinals, just to get my Olympic ranking up. And with that said, I played every single good player in Africa up till the finals and then I still won the finals so I think with that expectation of getting a better result that you put forward so I think that was one of my greatest accomplishments knowing that I can do better and, and not feeling, just stopping to a point and the feeling and emotion the feeling is great I think it's very unexpected like I was shocked standing there getting your medal and I'm not really quite sure what was happening just looking around people smiling and cheering and I'm just like okay this is probably a big thing <laughs> so thank you and did they play the national anthem and I mean if if so do you realize that essentially they were playing the South African national anthem just for you essentially I know that they did play it and I think standing there made me feel really proud because knowing that um there's I'm one of those people bringing a gold medal home. It's not always that you see on TV, oh, that person like Chad Leclerc or those type of people bring medals home, but it's you as well. So, yeah, it was quite a great feeling. And, uh, I mean, being a, a relatively small uh, sport, um, two questions here. One, do you feel um, you received the recognition you deserve, essentially being the, the African champion? Um, and two, are you looking to give more back into the game, sort of once you end your career? Is it, is it something that you foresee long term to actually be involved in badminton for, for your life? Well, recognition wise, yes. Um, Free State made it like a thing where they're trying to put you as much as possible in the newspapers to like show South Africa what you've accomplished. So recognition wise, I got a lot and I'm very grateful therefore. Um, and well, after my career, I'm gonna try to do coaching and give back the information what I've received and the, um, the how can I explain, the experience I got from overseas in different tournaments. I'm gonna try to like incorporate or give it over to the next player. But that being said, I started with small children training. Um, helping my coach nowadays or a few days or whenever. So I'm going to try to coach afterwards. And uh, just in closing, Nita, um, has there been a specific person that's been the most influential person in your career to date? Yes, I would say Johan Klenkhout, um, my coach, because he showed me no matter what battles you face, you can get through it and you can still accomplish everything, even though you're going through a tough time or you have challenges in your life. So, um, yeah, no, Johan Klenkel definitely stood out for me. Nita, it's been brilliant chatting to you on Sport SA Daily Diary. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, good luck with that Olympic dream. No doubt it will become a reality and we'll, we'll see you flying South Africa's flag on the biggest stage of all. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Catch us again on tomorrow's episode of Sport SA Daily Diary, where we chat to a South African high jumper who jumped all the way to a double world championship.